Oh, guys, that was a nice walleye. Out at the pond today, getting ready for winter because the negative temperatures are coming and we got a new toy to install in the pond. This actually has a number of uses, um, kind of multi-season, but in the winter, we want to create a little bit of open water. One, we're going to leave the dock in and so we don't want the ice to um, damage the dock posts. And two, we're going to leave the waterfall going all winter and so we want to keep the intake bay open. And so rather than moving the, the fusers and the aerator into shallower water, we're going to create an open water with this new Casco de-icer. This thing, we got the three-quarter horse um, with a 50-foot cord, 120 volts. And we also got the uh, universal dock mount. We're gonna get this um, hooked up to the dock so we can angle it and create water movement and the current so that it doesn't freeze. And um, this will be great in the even in the summer to move water to clear vegetation in shallow areas and then also create moving water for um, for fish spawning behavior. Okay. I got power cord and two ropes to tie it off to the dock. If you don't get the universal mount, if you don't get the, the dock mount, um, this can these can just be used to, to tether, but with the dock mount, it gives us more flexibility. You know, you're gonna pay more for that, obviously. You pay for convenience and, and flexibility. If you're interested in getting one of these pieces, this is what um, this is what comes with it. And this, I think, um, goes around a, a dock post. And then this guy for flexibility anyway okay so i'm uh, mostly set up here i did not want to permanently install this bracket onto the dock so what i did instead is got a four by six and i'm gonna place this on top of the dock and then bracket or brace this down i'll show you when i get down there but the way this the way this works is um got this the ice eater and I had to go to the store and get a one inch galvanized schedule 40 pipe but here you can set it at the the height that you want lock that in once this is hanging over the edge of the the dock you can angle the the direction of the current that you want oh oops and uh also you've got a um, a little swivel down here so you can actually angle the the thing up or down or have it level and so I'll play with that once I get down there. If your pond freezes in the winter, listen up. I've seen so many questions on message boards about whether you should leave your aerator running in the winter to pump oxygen in the pond during the ice season. That answer depends on your climate and it also depends on where your diffusers are in your pond. You don't want to leave your diffusers running all winter in the deepest parts of your pond. The reason being is that the water circulation in the deepest part of the pond actually super cools the water. Your fish need a relatively warmer pocket of water during the winter. And the water at the bottom of your pond in the winter during the ice season is roughly 39 degrees. That's the most dense water. And so that falls to the bottom at 39 degrees. The surface temperature, of course, when it freezes is 32 degrees. And the fish will hang out at the bottom a lot during the winter because it's relatively warmer water. But when you aerate all winter long with your diffusers in the deep parts of the pond, the water circulation continually cycles the water to the surface where it's exposed to the colder air. And that will actually lower the entire body of water temperature to less than 39 degrees. And since fish are cold-blooded, they become even more lethargic and can potentially kill your fish by doing this if the winter is an extreme one. The most common causes of fish kills in the winter is not because you don't pump oxygen in the pond, it's actually because you don't let the bad gases out. See, cold water is significantly higher in dissolved oxygen than warmer water. The cold water can hold dissolved oxygen for a long time. 
Ever wonder why your minnows die in the summer almost immediately in your minnow bucket if you're not providing supplemental oxygen? But when you keep those same minnows in a minnow bucket during the winter, they last for days without aeration. And that's why cold water is rich with dissolved oxygen. All things being equal, fish would have plenty of oxygen to make it through the winter under the ice if there wasn't a poisoning process that takes place all winter long under the water that you may not be aware of. Let me explain the issue. And this underwater footage helps illustrate what's already beginning to happen in November when this footage was taken. During the summer, plant growth explodes under the water in most ponds, and vegetation grows like crazy, and photosynthesis is in full effect. But then as you transition to fall and winter, days are shorter and the photo period is significantly reduced. And those green plants under the water begin to die, and turn brown, fall to the bottom of the pond, and they start the decaying process. And this happens all throughout the winter under the ice. What happens during this time is all that decaying plant matter puts off noxious gases that produces carbon dioxide, and this process sucks the oxygen out of the pond. The longer the winter and more prolonged the ice cover lasts on your pond, the less oxygen there will be in your pond to sustain a healthy fish population until the spring thaw. The solution is to allow those noxious gases and CO2 to escape from the water and out into the atmosphere. If your pond stays completely ice-covered for too many months in the winter, the gases stay trapped under the ice and build up and cause oxygen crashes, killing your fish. This is especially important on smaller ponds. Many of us have smaller bodies of water that we're managing, and since our volumes of water are smaller, they can get out of balance quickly. On larger lakes, it's not as big of an issue because these are greater volumes of water to hold the dissolved oxygen in the water and to keep fish alive throughout the winter. There's just more margin for error on larger water. But on small ponds, it's imperative to keep a small section of your pond free of ice in a shallow section of the pond to allow the toxins and noxious gases to escape throughout the winter and prevent the dissolved oxygen crash in your pond. You can do this by either putting an aeration diffuser in a shallow area of your pond that will circulate the water enough to leave a small hole open in the ice, or by using one of these machines to agitate the surface water, keeping it free of ice, and you accomplish the main goal either way. In both instances, you're oxygenating the water some, but putting oxygen in the pond in the winter isn't the goal. What you're actually doing is letting the CO2 and other gases escape. So in our test run, I don't love this install. It's a little bit obnoxious, but before I start drilling, look out. So you turn this thing on, and uh, it's got some force behind it. We've got a really moves some water and it clears up everything rather than drilling holes in the dock right now I like the idea of being able to move this around a little bit until we figure out exactly where we want it so from the edge of the dock you can see the current easily 40 feet out there so this has multiple purposes here we're going to use it this winter to keep some open water right here around the dock so that the dock um, posts don't freeze and get damaged and then also to keep our intake bay open free of water because we're going to leave the waterfall running over here this winter and so we'll just see how that goes go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel so that you can see our progress this winter. But what it also does in the summertime, if you want to clear a section of um, shallow area free of vegetation, this thing puts out some force and it will blow the vegetation right away. I've just changed the angle on it to point it upwards so it creates a little bit more uh, surface agitation and so I'm gonna stick this down there and see what that effect has it on it I don't want to create so much open water here in the shallows I just want to create the open water right here by the dock and right over there by the intake bay and so if I can create just a little pocket of open water right here and have everything else freeze this winter for our ice fishing that is gonna be the goal
Now that, I think, is fantastic. I got a current blowing right in through the rocks into the intake bay. That's gonna stay open. We got a little bit of the side ripple going underneath the dock. That should create enough, enough surface movement of the water here to keep our dock free. And it's still putting some, some ripple current out that way. So you might be wondering, we built this whole waterfall to create moving water for walleye spawning activity. We've just created a river system here for about, I mean, 1200 bucks is not insignificant, but this machine over there can pump out a current. So if you're looking for and maybe an inexpensive way to create some current in your pond Move, moving water that's the thing about ponds is they're kind of stagnant um, and so if you're looking to do something cool 12 1500 bucks with some accessories and things you can move some water Guys, I'm hooked up here. My good looking smallmouth. Okay. How about that, guys? How about this? Shoot, yeah. That's a good thick fish. Laying flat. It's going to go 13. Beautiful. It's turning cold here. The water's clarifying. Algae blooms are done for the year. Getting ready for winter. So fall is officially here. Thanksgiving's next week. Nothing's grown anymore. You can see the rock work that we did this year in the draw there. And over in that side hill, we've got a birch tree planted right here. Turn the aeration off today. We made some pretty good progress this year. 